Hello, in today's video, we are discussing photography's biggest headaches. Can't even take a decent picture. You're useless. <laughs> Before we get going today though, I am with Mally Davis for the day, who was a huge killer member of a more recent video, but this video is also sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. It's absolutely brutal, just like bullets of ice in your face as we're walking up this hill trying to make it to those trees there to get a bit of shelter. Just like blades hitting your face. A big annoyance for me as a landscape photographer is the weather and the elements. And today is a perfect example of that. And it's frustrating because we all know it's the light that makes the image. If you get good weather conditions, then your image is gonna be absolutely stunning. Today is so changeable. One minute you've got hail, and then the next minute you've got this just truly stunning light. I mean, look over there. I've got my camera set up to capture that, and it's just stunning. Mally's capturing some footage down there as well. It's the spring now, we're into spring. You got snow on the mountains over there. Just looking absolutely epic. I'm hoping when we get to the top, I'll get a better view of that. But I really love the light from over there, from that sort of low in the sky sun that's just producing so much drama. But it's painful and it takes a lot of resilience to put up with these conditions. I slept in the car last night as well, so I didn't get the best night's sleep. I'm on the verge of giving up, if I'm honest, and it's the weather that's making me feel like that. Let's capture an image then, because it is, oh, I mean, can you see on the back of that camera there, just how dramatic that looks. It's just looking stunning. There's just a little hill that I really find appealing. And that's what I'm focusing on. It's got really interesting light on it. It's surrounded by the weather. It's a lovely form. There's some nice shape as well in the scene. Just fantastic, I'm at F8. 1 100th one of a second, ISO 100. It's so full of drama, just utterly stunning. That's the thing, you put up with the weather. It's annoying, especially when we've had a rubbish winter anyway. So much rain and I'm ready for a bit of nice weather, if I'm honest. But when you then capture a, a keeper like that, or what I think is going to be a keeper, all your troubles just disappear. That all of that difficulty just evaporates and you're left with just this natural high, this kind of huge boost of creativity, and it feels great. Call yourself a photographer? Think you're a photographer, you're a YouTuber. You can't even take a decent picture. Every single video you put out, there's like two or three. And we're supposed to be impressed by this. It's getting worse as well with your namby pamby gimbal fucking autofocus on your mush. People look up to you. People think you're someone who's a, a pro and you're gonna show people how they can be pros. Look at me, I've got nowhere, you're useless. You're not even caring for the landscape that's around you. What do you think this is? We've got one life, one earth, and you're going out in your, your petrol guzzling. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> When I first started out entering the professional world as a wedding photographer, I was hit with a wave of other local wedding photographers who were really unpleasant. That's what actually inspired me to start this channel in the first place, is that I didn't want to be that kind of conservative photographer. I love photography and I want to promote photography and I want to share my love and passion for it with you to maybe inspire you. We can break these people down into three categories. Number one, you've just got your general awful people. <laughs> Can't even take a decent picture. You're useless! <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, that was proper funny and I really appreciate Mally giving me that bit of a roasting. Very funny, really enjoyed that. But number two, with 
annoying photographers are the gatekeepers. Now these people are often very pleasant, uh, mild mannered, and it's a kind of uh, passive aggressiveness. <laughs> they say you shouldn't do this, or you can't do that, or you won't be able to do this. I think if you're willing to put the energy in and put the work in, you can do anything. I've experienced these types of people in all my jobs that I've had in the past. And you, I'm sure if you think hard enough, you will know one of them. Try hard not to be the gatekeeper, encourage people and share your love and passion for it. Number three, and I was considering not talking about this, but number three of annoying photographers are people that after all this time are still shilling NFTs to you. The idea of digital scarcity is appealing. I don't deny that. And the idea that you can make money from your photography in the digital space that is appealing. It's why I investigated NFTs in the first place, but quickly realized that they are undoubtedly a scam, particularly on the Ethereum blockchain where that's just a scam generally. Images don't even sit on that blockchain. So the fact that a lot of these bigger photographers who are doing NFTs, they know this. They know all these things. And after NFTs had seemingly gone, gone away, they've now come back because the market's come back a bit and they're doing it again. And I'm just thinking, well, what? Like, oh, it's frustrating. And fair enough, it's a free market and people can choose what to buy. But if you know you are selling snake oil, you become a snake oil salesman. And I know I sound like a bit of a gatekeeper and people have had a go at me for this before, but I'm kind of thinking, well, I'm not just going to leave you to scam in peace. So I don't know, I might cut some of this out because I don't want the grief on it, to be honest, but I just feel like a sense of duty to warn you. If you don't want to take my advice, at least do your own research to figure out what they're all about. Because people have lost money on them, a lot of money and only one or two people have made a lot of it. So be at the very least, be cautious. Right, after that slightly serious note, uh, the sun's come back out. So <laughs> the conditions have changed in a matter of, well, minutes. Right, I seem to have lost Mally. So I'll just go and have a little look around and see if I can find him. But while I'm doing that, as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. In my opinion, Squarespace is just the best place for photographers to build their own websites. One of the main reasons for that is that it's just so easy to do. You go to squarespace.com and you type in the kind of website you want to build or what it's for, and then they provide uh, some template options. You then just pick one of those templates, put some of your images and a little bit of your text on there, and before you know it, you will have a unique and beautiful looking website. You don't need any technical knowledge. If you can drag boxes around on Windows, then you can build a Squarespace website. Another great feature as well, it's important in 2024 as well, is that it will automatically adjust your website to look perfect on any type of screen, including a phone. Super important, can't stress that enough because everybody's looking at websites on their phone. Phone first, as they say. Another great thing is that Squarespace will grow with you. You can start off with a very simple gallery and make your images look big, bold and beautiful, way better than they look on social media, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Then it will grow with you. So if you want to create an online store and start selling things like books or prints or cards or workshops or anything your heart desires, you can do that just as easily with Squarespace. They also now have a member section where you can build an area for members and they you can get people coming back to your website time and time again with premium content just for them. Super easy to do as well. They've got award-winning customer service. I have used them for years. I wish I'd found them when I first built a website because just seamless and easy and looks professional and beautiful. So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And if you like what you've created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN. Tell them that I sent you there because then you win, I win, and they win. We all win and that's a beautiful thing. And you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Right, I did just hear Mally uh, getting very passionate about something and the weather is again coming down. What were you getting excited about there, mate? There's a tree over there like a wizard. It was so gnarly. 
and the darkness behind it was just incredible. Like this is what's hitting us now, was that <laughs> darkness. And it's full on snow. What yeah. is going on? I can't even see. <laughs> But the light just fell on that tree and nowhere else. And it's the shot of the day for me. Oh good, I, I hope it was worth it. We can uh, go uh, home. Uh. <laughs> when you hit a certain age, you can moan about anything. As we all know, my biggest photography annoyance has to be not being able to exhibit or get photo my photography in a gallery. To be able to have a show, put out my work, you know, multiple pieces. I'm painting and everything's fantastic, galleries love it, but photography gets shunned. We never seem to get taken seriously. And I've been into a few galleries and they go, no, sorry, we don't take photography. Or we're after a specific nudes, naked women. I'm like, come on, you know, what is it about photography that doesn't make it into a gallery? And I find it quite rude as well that photography is not taken seriously. And yeah, in a nutshell, that's my annoyance. The hail is insane. Let's take shelter behind these trees, I think. Whew. A few minutes later, another gap in the weather appeared, so we managed to escape the shelter of the woods. The sun came out, and I managed to make two images of this scene that had been evading us for most of the morning. We then decided to make a break for the top, and as I approached the summit, the distant mountains started to come into view. Bathed in stunning light, I ran to the top to set up my camera. Faced with one of the most beautiful scenes I have witnessed for quite some time, I planned to discuss the headache of posting images to social media, which these days often feels like a meaningless experience. But as my audio failed to record properly, I was reminded on the top of a mountain with a mate in a very special moment that these are the things that matter. This is what fulfills us. Moments of elation as we have the privilege to be in these places with our cameras ready to tell the stories and produce the artwork that these occasions deserve. Disappointed the audio failed at the top there. It's my fault because I didn't turn the microphone on that's in my pocket because it turns off automatically if, I'm, if you haven't used it for a few minutes. It's frustrating and it's one of my, if not the biggest photography headache that I have and that is my gear and more specifically the sort of never-ending gear upgrade cycle. It's particularly annoying because we live in a world where technology should be constantly making things easier and over time things should also get cheaper be because technology is deflationary. Annoyingly though because of inflation it just gets more and more and more expensive and keeping up with what you've got already is just really difficult and the camera here is an example of that. My old one just died. I've now replaced it with this DJI camera which has a lot of benefits and it's good but it's delicate and the audio doesn't work sometimes because I forget to turn the microphone on. Recently, my iMac Pro stopped working. Just kept crashing. I couldn't edit videos, couldn't do anything. So I've had to drop a load of money that I don't really have on a new computer. And then, annoyingly, just as I'd upgraded that, my hard drive is starting to have problems. I've got a sort of five hard drive RAID thing that's made by Drobo. And Drobo just happened to have gone out of business. So now that's going to not be supported very, very soon. So I'm going to have to find four and a half grand to replace that because storage is expensive, especially when you're making videos and you want to have access to it. 
at all times. And I know I am sponsored by Canon, but the one thing I haven't felt the need to upgrade because it's so good is my Canon 5D Mark IV. I am gonna upgrade that at some point, but not because I have to. In a similar way to how we've been today to get to the top of that hill, you've just gotta be resilient. You gotta keep working hard and you gotta keep doing it because what else are we gonna do? Why not watch this video here to see more of Mali and a day out with Verity? Or click here to watch this video if you wanna learn about printing. I will see you on another one very, very soon. Bye. Yes, what a day, what a day.